So for today's bowling work, I'm gonna do a little bit of alignment work with through my run up and then how I'm aligning myself at the crease for a certain skill outcome. I've been doing a bit of a trial with um, full track AI. And so I've set it up here in the umpire's view and that will give me some nice um, ball tracking for my uh, the outcomes. Uh, what I'm sort of curious to see is how I can use my run up angle and my alignment at the crease to then create the sorts of skill outcomes that I'm looking to achieve. So for this first over, um, I'm pretty much just looking to achieve a nice sort of alignment towards leg stump, or you might think an alignment towards the batsman, and then I'm looking to sort of take it away from there. So let's see how I go for my first six. So first ball, I have a feeling that went over leg stump. Um, no swing there, it didn't look like. Uh, I guess I can check the ball tracking to see how it went. But um, if that ball went over leg stump and there was no swing, then um, I think that's just a sign that I'll have to put a bit more swing into it. Uh, so another one down leg. That one I did feel I uh, I rolled my fingers down the side of the ball. So it might be interesting to look back at the, uh, the footage there to see, um, yeah, if my fingers rolled down the, uh, the side of the ball. Hopefully I've got a bit of a slow mode there that I can use. That oh, was a bit better. Probably a half folly, but uh, we won't comment on that. I can uh, <laughs> actually, now I've got the, uh, the full track software to see um, where about to did land. They do have um, pitch maps. So, oh, so far I'm not doing too good actually with that. <laughs> There's a cool little, uh, yeah, actually a cool little um, thing to play around with. I'm actually gonna get some pretty cool data at the end. Oh, over off stump, sorry. Over the leg stump. That one did swing more. Ah, uh, just eyeballing it. Um, I did relax the wrist, that ball, a bit more. So I think a relaxed wrist always seems to um, help with some uh, some out swing. And if you want somebody to look at, if you're looking for the perfect wrist position, just watch Muhammad Sami. Incredible. <laughs> Uh, I fucked the run up there. That's not ideal, but uh, this happens when you're just sort of cruising through. Um, I am still thinking a little bit about my, um, my brace front leg and trying to keep my lower body mechanics um, quite tight. So I've got that, and then sort of just thinking about completing my action uh, to hopefully get the energy behind the ball and get my out swinger. Okay, so I have a feeling that is six. Uh, definitely wasn't my best six. Um, so let's have a look at how they came out and then maybe we will readjust the next over. Uh, six balls. Seven, oh, seven balls. Nice and down leg for ball number one. Let's check my ball tracking. Okay. With the pitch map. So, I can screen record this actually. It might work out really well. Microphone on because you can never have enough um, filming. So, this was, let me go back. So this is where I am now and I know the first two balls were down leg. Third ball, I think, started to look a bit better. That's where I was um, nice and happy. Let's see if I can grab the ball tracking on there. Cool, so this is, this is essentially the ball that I am looking to uh, deliver as a right-hander. Um, you can sort of see there that that one didn't have much swing on it at all, but you can sort of be happy with that going just over and just outside, top of off. Uh, which ball did swing? So. I think it was ball five, had a bit of um, concept not available, it's not ideal. Nope, 
going to CMDA, I think. Fuck, I wonder if it's all the same. Yeah, it did. Well, uh, we'll just quickly say that this ball was actually to a left-hander because then it would be a nice ball. Um, it looked like it was aiming for about maybe fourth stump, but it seems to have jagged away. That's really cool. Not what I was hoping for, but <laughs> I guess I can maybe take credit. Look at this pitch map. Uh, you know what, to be fair, that's actually better than I thought. Um, I just given they, they kind of all look like they're pitching around, um, you know, I guess on the on the line of the, the stumps, but you can sort of see some balls are sort of, I'm running my fingers down the side of the ball, so I'm pushing them further down the leg with the swing and the seam. Uh, and some balls, when I get the wrist right, then they're kind of straightening and going over um, off stump. There was one that I liked. It was ball six. No, it wasn't that one. Ball four. Mm, three. Uh, seven. Uh, not really. Might have to come back and look at, maybe it was ball five, the one that said the content was not available. Damn, so it must have missed one. Um, back into my session. And then it's really easy to set up actually, like if I just go back, this is the beautiful thing. Resume, and then I just line it back up, click continue, and we're away. How good is that? Okay, so that was, um, that was my first uh, six balls. Not exactly where I would have liked them to come out. So what I'm gonna do now is probably do two things. I might actually straighten the line of my run up because I do have a towards leg stump. So maybe if I bowl on a slightly straighter line. So if I bowl on a slightly straighter line, I can keep myself nicely aligned. I should see that ball come away quite nicely. The issue will be if I feel like I get too close so that when I come to release the ball, I feel like I need to kind of lean away a little bit to push the ball up the stumps to be able to get myself, well, to be able to bowl the ball at the stumps. That's where I may have some issues. So that wasn't too bad. So first ball, you can already immediately see a, uh, a skill change, um, just simply by changing how I'm aligned at the crease using my run-up angle. So, kind of cool. Uh, that one was um, probably a bit too full. I think. So that one, even though it hit the stumps, um, probably a bit too full. And I can have a look at that on um, on the full track. That was ball two over to Sue. So, um, yeah, back into that sort of um, channel that I guess you can kind of um, enjoy. I'm sort of seeing a bit of tail away, a bit of outswing, which is uh, what I'm after. Uh, but I do feel like I could potentially be a bit too close. So the line that I'm starting it on and then sort of finishing the action, I think I might struggle to get a ball going towards off stump and then swing away. It kind of feels like it's starting fourth or fifth, then moving away. Um, that'd be a good one to check the ball tracking on. So that one, I definitely try to align myself um, kind of nicely towards middle and off middle and leg. Um, and I think you would have seen on that one as well, like that one definitely swung more. Uh, so there's a couple of cool little um, insights into just how changing your alignment, the what, what sort of cues I might use to get myself into different alignments at the crease, I'm gonna change skill outcomes. And this will all form part of my tactical plan when I'm bowling a batsman. <laughs> 
Okay. I have a feeling that's six again. Let's us come and have a look at ball tracking. Ball nine, the second ball that spell that I kind of um, knocked out the stumps and thought was too full. Let us have a look. Let's get this on, ball tracking. Yeah, look at that, that looks way too full. Let's come look for a batsman's angle. Oh, you tell me batsman, who's enjoying that one? You know what, it might have actually seen in a little bit. I might actually be okay, maybe an inside edge of the pad. <laughs> but uh, definitely too full. Where's my, um, yeah, look at that, gosh. Um, you done, done the ball track? Yeah, way too full. All right, so let's come back out and have a look at the last ball. Probably better length, but outside off. Not enough swing. Yeah, that's not gonna be um, all that useful. So it's funny, like if you guys remember where the balls were the first over, those four balls, look at the four balls inside here on the stumps. Okay, in that nice blue line down the surface here. So those are all from my first over. Um, and this one on the far left in the blue zone, again, that was also um, first over. So those balls there have all kind of been on that sort of fourth, fifth stump line. So there's just a great kind of example of how just changing your run up angle is, is able to create a bit of a skill outcome. And I was having a chat with them um, yesterday and sort of saying, is there a way that you can uh, I guess um, kind of combine six balls into either a pitch map or like a kind of play-by-play -play, um, review because this is what I'm sort of curious to add with my bowling, so I reached out to them, um, into having something like this with a, a much more accurate ball tracking system as opposed to me trying to set my camera up and then having them try to you know, set, set my camera up here and then trying to use just my phone as like an umpire's view, which doesn't always pick it up as well. Whereas having something that has some pretty decent ball tracking um, would sort of definitely help me quite a lot because I can use this run up angle and then right there you can sort of see. So a lot of the time if you're having skill issues, it doesn't always mean that there's, that there's actually something wrong. Like I haven't changed my technique here. All I've done is change my alignment and I'm still using the same tech technical cues I used last session to think about my brace front leg to keep myself in nice kind of tight alignments here. So I think this is a good example of um, how you can combine the technical with the skill and I am um, you know very grateful for the guys at Full Truck who put together a pretty decent app and um, I think that's really exciting so I look forward to um, using it a bit more. I think I will just finish the filming for this session here because I've gotten what I want but what I was going to do was bowl around the wicket um, but I think I'd just be doing that to add some more cool content and to show off, oh, I can swing the ball both ways around the wicket, but no one really cares. So, without further ado, uh, yeah, enjoy your day. Hey guys, so I had some spare time today, given I just had, I sort of liked the bowl, so I thought, why not say there's anything that you guys would like me to discuss a little bit? And uh, one of the things you guys mentioned was the jump. And so I think what I can do is break the jump down into a couple of different areas that you can hopefully understand a bit more context behind the jump. Um, first of all, one of the key things that you always wanna be doing is jumping forwards, okay? So if I think about the direction that I wanna go in as I'm moving you know, towards my target, I wanna make sure I'm sort of going in that straight line that I'm sort of setting up from the start of my run up to where my target is going to be. So that's a really important thing. I wanna be jumping in the straight line, straight, straight line that I've been running in on uh, now from here you might say the issues that people might find is if they're jumping inwards or outwards that's never too ideal because you're going to have to then compensate for the momentum shift that you make so if you jump inwards okay so I think about I come into my jump here then I'm jumping inwards well then what goes in must come out so I might then collapse in this way and then I might go into sort of a cross the line base as I step across myself which means my upper body is going to lean away to sort of counter that sort of stuff. And you can sort of start to see that if I look at what happens during the run up and jump, I can usually see why certain things occur later down the sequence. So ideally going forth, we wanna minimize any kind of jumping out or jumping in. Um, jumping too high is something that commonly gets discussed. Um, jumping too high isn't always something that we do want. I think nine times out of 10, 
it's going to hold the bowler back because what goes up must come down. So if you are jumping high, you are going to need to be strong. Because if you jump up quite high, when you come down to back for contact, you've got forces coming down. So you're gonna to have to absorb those to make sure that you don't collapse. And if you jump up, come down, collapse during your back foot, during that delivery stride, and then your pelvis kind of dumps, which can put your lower back at risk. When you get the front foot contact, you aren't going to be able to brace your leg because you're kind of almost like collapsing into it. So your front leg's going to bend to try to protect you. Or your front leg's also going to bend because it doesn't really have any other choice. That's the compensation that needs to occur for your body to be able to organize itself to still be able to bowl towards the target. Okay, so sometimes jumping up, if you are a, I guess, trying to align yourself to be more side on at back for contact, it can help you there a little bit, but you don't want to be going too high. Now, to break that down a bit more, um, if you're trying to be, or if you're more of a linear type bowler, so you're trying to maximize the amount of linear momentum you can get and then transfer that through your delivery sequence, then you aren't going to need much of a jump, mainly because you're likely going to try to orientate your pelvis to be straight the whole way. Okay, so you don't need to jump up and down and have this big kind of moving around because your pelvis is going to stay in the same line that it was all the way through. Okay? And what you'll do to achieve hip shoulder separation is that during your jump, you'll then take your upper body out, okay, move through that jump quickly so that you can then rotate back and leverage that nice rotation that you've gotten from separating your hips and shoulders. Now, a bowler who's going to orientate themselves more side on and back for contact, well, they're going to need time in the air to be able to twist their lower body, okay, to close that off. This is where you're gonna need a bit more time in the air to be able to do that. Now, you might see they might jump a little bit higher, but it doesn't necessarily always happen, okay? It's not, it's not always a necessary thing to do to be able to achieve these positions. So taking this a step further, I wanna talk about how you link hip sort of separation into your jump. So if you think about being a bowler who's gonna be more linear and you're going to be more front on with your pelvis, then during the stance phase of your jump, which is when the foot's on the ground, you're going to take, if I look at, this is my, my foot now being on the ground, your upper body out. Okay, so as I come into my takeoff position, all right, I'm about here. So you can sort of see my upper body's a bit more side on. My lower body is still facing straight. So that means my pelvis is still facing straight, which is why I'm not gonna need much time in the air. So when I get to back foot contact, I'm going to be in a nice position here where I've got my lower body facing nice and straight, my upper body's still a little, little bit side on so I can then use that rotation coming through. Now, you can sort of look at this as being a top half going out method. Uh, for a more rotational type bowler, they're going to need time in the air to get both their upper body out during their stance phase. Then when they're mid-flight in the air, they're going to rotate the lower body that they get to this sort of a position when their upper body and their lower body is both side on. But they have to bring their lower body in first. So that creates that nice stretch. If the lower body comes in first, it means my pelvis is facing more forwards. While my upper body is still behind, you get this nice stretch across here and you use that to power through. And that's where you can get some nice, some nice energy, also sort of coming from, you know, your muscles and that kind of elastic part through your, your kind of upper body chain. I guess that's the way you could sort of call it. So some of the issues that commonly associate with this, you know, trying to get the hip shoulder, shoulder separation right, is that you might not use your stance phase to open yourself up. So you've then got to find somewhere else to do it, which is probably not going to be very efficient. And that usually leads in you being tight flexing in here as you go through ball release. Um, or you might say, bring yourself back in too early. So if I get myself side on during my stance phase, but during the mid flight, I bring myself back, we can already see my lower body's facing off, you know, to the side, but my upper body's too open. Then I'm gonna step across myself and get into some quite awful positions. So just not as ideal if you wanna be able to put a lot of energy behind the ball. Um, there's a bit more to it. I'm trying to think about what I discussed and what I haven't discussed. Um, another thing about how you're kind of like coming down on the ground, um, you, you can usually tell if somebody's going to go up by how they touch down. If you touch downhill first, what usually happens is that bowler goes up. Whereas if you see a bowler kind of come in four foot first and, and their rear leg is going to be more up here, already sort of driving up, they're more likely to move horizontally forward, which is sort of more what we want, maintaining that kind of horizontal um, acceleration, horizontal momentum of the, Jesus Christ, that horizontal momentum of your center of mass. So 
this is where we can use some constraints. I might try to raise you up, like put something under that, that jump foot. So now because you're already higher, well, you won't need to go up anymore. So now you can kind of claw yourself forwards um, more horizontally than going up. That's a very simple thing to sort of correct for the constraints. Um, and I guess the last thing you can look at, you know, how much time you need in the air. I know um, there's some coaches who might've used jump a bit high, so you've got more time to kind of rotate the legs up so that you've got this leg up nice and high at back for contact, which is more ideal. Some bowlers might get the back for contact and be kind of like, you know, here, their leg hasn't gotten through, their, their front leg hasn't come through far enough, so they need more time during their delivery stride to, I guess, get in the right position and then put it down. Um, but the way that I would also approach that is to work on some running mechanics and some sprint work because that is something that you can teach when you think about, not say as you jump one leg down up, they're kind of working together. All right, and that's a quarter kind of key components of how you approach running mechanics. You want both sides of your body working together, different limbs matching up with the opposite sides. Um, and that is something that you can sort of ingrain into your fast bowling stuff as you start to work on it a bit more, which is one of the reasons why I bang on about running mechanics um, and relaxation too. Because if you're tensed and stiff, that's usually when you mistime your action. So I know it's a bit of a tangent, but usually when bowlers are tensed or stiff, um, that's when they mistime themselves and, and speed something up. So they bring the upper body back in too early. Um, maybe because they're impatient, they want to bowl the ball. Um, these are just a couple of, uh, a couple of little things that um, can sort of go wrong. Uh, look, that's all I've got off the top of my head. I hope that's interesting. And uh, yeah, I think if you guys have any questions or anything, um, feel free to tell me.